said you worship him. When you worship, that's an intimate relationship with God. on Jesus. Take your mind off your problems. Glory to Let's celebrate them, the leadership of this church. Hallelujah. To the mothers on the move, let's thank them. Thank God for them. Celebrate them. And to the minstrels, let's thank God for them. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that you're here. Amen. Uh, I think sometimes we take for granted, you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I think we take for granted. Just sing our brothers and sisters every day or every Sunday. Uh, you don't know what it took to get your brother and sister here today. Uh, you don't know what they had to endure, what they had to go through. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank God that I'm here. I thank God that I'm here. Hallelujah. Somebody went to sleep last night, didn't wake up this morning. But we are so fortunate, amen, to be in the land of the living. Amen. I think on last Sunday, um, I think we were taken back as not only a nation, but uh, the world of hearing about the tragic events uh, that happened in California. Um, and we cannot, as the church, not properly respond that we mourn with those families that Amen. lost. Amen. I don't want us to get to the point where we're so saved that we miss the humanity part. That's right, Bishop. Um, there's, a, there's a wife, there's a mother that lost not only her husband, but her child also. And our hearts are broken with her. Uh, but yet in all that, amen, God is still God. And he is still sovereign and he still sits on the throne. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. So uh, I just wanted to take the time, amen, to, you know, uh, she might not know us. The families might not know us. Amen. But you have a responsibility as a believer to lift them up in prayer. That's right. That's right. You have a responsibility to pray for those that can't pray for themselves. Uh, I know uh, we have all experienced death. We have all experienced some type of loss. Uh, so we we pray for those that are going through this transition 
How many know that part of living is done? Yeah. Uh, if you're alive right now, you got a date. You know what I'm saying? It's real, Bishop. I want you to think that that you're going to live forever. Uh, but the Bible is very clear that we are pilgrims just passing through. This is not our home. Y'all ain't saying that. We are pilgrims passing through. Amen. So we amen celebrate. I believe they have a black history speech. Amen. How many thank God for black history? How many thank God that amen we how many glad to be black? So, okay. All right. Hey, man, I'm happy to be black. Yes. I ain't saying nothing. Yes. I'm proud to be black. And you know, we are we are a diverse church. We have some white people in this church. <laughs> <laughs> white people in this church. I know y'all looking around. <laughs> Listen, let's thank our sister in that church. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Let's thank God. Amen. For Mother Carolyn Johnson as she comes in Jesus. Now they just took it. Now bring the mic back. Okay. Bring the mic. 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 Okay.
and also built a home on that land for the older poor in Auburn, New York. She stayed there until she was deceased. She risked her life many times to go back to free her people. Yes, she was brave and very courageous. She also established schools for the freed men in South Carolina and was also a spy and a nurse for the Union Army during the Civil War. There are some of her, these are just some of her quotes, I didn't choose but a few. But one of them say, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. I grew up like a neglected weed, ignorant of liberty, having no experience of it. Her famous one was, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. In my conclusion, I say, it only takes just one dreamer to step up and change the world. So dreamers, step up, change the world. I'd like to leave this poem with you. It's called, That's Life. This life is a wonderful gift. Accept it. Embrace it. It starts with a new day. Wake up and greet it. Life is a challenge. Take it head on and meet it. Full of opportunity. Use it. Don't waste it. Husbands, that's the only thing I took from you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We thank God for black history. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our roots. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Hold somebody's hand. Let's look at God. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this day. God, we ask that you speak to our hearts and give us the words that will bring you life. And Father, we thank you. And we praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your kingdom's constitution, your holy Bibles, let us turn to Genesis, the book of beginnings. Amen. Genesis chapter number 37. We will get our reading in verse number 23. And consummate our reading in verse number 28. When you have it, say, I got it. <clears throat> what is Paul's and amen um, acknowledge? Amen. Uh, another one of our young men that will be uh, shipping out to uh, the U.S. Army. Amen. And uh, our prayers are with him, and we cover him with the, the blood of Jesus that no hurt, harm, and danger will come unto him. Yes. Amen. Let's thank God for Brother Kyrie. You're right? Raise your hands. Amen. Let's thank God for him. We are proud of him. Amen. We of him. I got a card for you. Amen. I got a card for you. So don't leave church. Amen. I got a card for you. You know, um, my mama always told me, don't get nobody no card. They ain't got nothing in it. So if y'all want to give me a card, Put something in it, praise God. Amen. Genesis chapter number 37. We'll begin our reading at verse number 23. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. Now, God has pressed on me this month to talk about family matters. Yes. Because how many of you know we all have family matters? Here begin the reading of the Holy Scriptures. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brothers that they stripped 
Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread and lifted up their eyes and looked and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it out down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brother, Pro what profit it is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let us not our hand upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content then passed by the Midianites merchantmen and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Israelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought Joseph to Egypt. And all the people said amen. amen. For these few fleeting moments, look at your neighbor and say neighbor, neighbor. or neighbor. Oh, neighbor. We're still family. We're still family. Give me hands. My sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, it is interesting. Yeah. 1989, we were all introduced to new sitcom family. We were used to the Cosby's because the Cosby's was the model family. You had two working adults, successful, raising children. But in 1989, we were introduced to another family. A police officer. A stay-at-home mom. With three children. Laura. Eddie. And Judy. For four seasons, we were used to this family. Their day to day struggle with life and trying to balance certain problems and situations. But around the fourth season, Nicole, something happened that we weren't ready for. Judy went upstairs and never came. And the sad reality is nobody ever missed her. <laughs> it was contract disputes that caused Sister Judy to lose her position, lose her job. But you see that the problem that I have with it is that she was never mentioned again. It was as if life had gone on without her. And before you look at me sideways, some of our family treats us the same way. As if we don't exist. As if we don't have the same blood going through our way. I'm concerned because <clears throat> what we have lost is a sense of community, not only in the church, but in family. You know they would say things like the family that prays together. Oh, y'all know what? I'm not talking about, you know, because Medea said. This was something that was instilled in us. But how 
many of you know that can't nobody cut your throat? Mm. Lord have mercy. Like family. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all, 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 y'all can look like that all you want to. Uh, but I got some cousins right now that can catch those hands. <laughs> There are certain family members right now that you know. I'm not going to leave my purse around them. Because they're going to steal grease out the biscuit. Y'all ain't saying that. There are certain people in your family that you know but watch this, it does not stop them from being your family. Now, I, have, I must be transparent. Me and my sister have an interesting and unique relationship. <laughs> My sister, as quiet as it's kept, and if y'all laugh at me, I promise you, you're going to hell. <laughs> this is coming from the preacher. My sister, from the age of three, maybe about 14, whooped my behind going At the news that she was going to have a brother, she took me, Nene, out of the bassinet, put me underneath the bed, <laughs> when my mother asked her, where is your brother, she said, I don't know. My sister would terrorize me. My sister would cause me to think that she did not like me. My sister would beat me up, Samuel. But here's the interesting thing. She would beat me up. But she wouldn't like nobody else. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. There is a certain code of ethics that I think that we're missing now. Now, I can bother you. I can say whatever I want to to you. But I'm not going to let anybody else treat you any type of way. Because... Help me say we're family. We're family. Here in our text we find a character by the name of Joseph who is despised by his brethren because of the love that his father shows towards him. Now, let me pause here because I do not want to upset anybody. Because I know there will be a great tension and mothers, please look forward. Because I don't want people to think that I'm talking about you. But there are certain children that can get away with certain things that the others can't. If you are the baby, you understand what I'm talking about. Because the oldest child, you were the practice child, I'm sorry. They practice on you because they didn't know how to be parents. And so you were just the guinea pig. 
By the time they got to the baby, they had figured it out. Oh, they saying that. And my sister found this out. She said to herself, why does he get away with everything? Why does he get to stay up? I was like, listen, my your business. It doesn't have anything to do with you. But Joseph is despised by his brethren because he is the youngest. Because his father, Jacob, loves him because he is a product of his old age. The Bible says that now Joseph begins to dream. You have to watch out who you share your dreams Amen. with. Because everybody is not excited about your dream. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. Oh neighbor. neighbor. Are you excited? Are you excited? About what God showed me. Before you get an attitude with your neighbor, understand that some people can't get excited for you because God never showed them. So how can you get excited for something that you never seen? Well, the Bible says that they have a problem with him because not only does his father Jacob love him, but he expresses his love through uh, giftings. Hallelujah. I tell my son when he travels with me, I said, listen, what goes on in this car stays in this car. I have to, I have to, I have to establish these rules. Because he's going to make it bad for both of us. I tell him now, listen, we're gonna go to the store. We're gonna get some candy. But please don't go home and tell your sister and tell your mother because then I have to go back out and get her some candy. Because this is just our time. Y'all be saying that. I give him these instructions. He shakes his head. Yes, I understand. Until he gets home, tells it all. Daddy got me some skills. So the first thing his sister said is, Where is mine? So then, there, I have to now go back to the store. Because my son doesn't know how to close his mouth. Sometimes it's better if you don't say things to people at all. Because if you hate me now, and I don't even have it, y'all ain't saying nothing. What are you going to do when God really does do what he said he's going to do? You're going to have to be on Ridley. Crack, heroin, y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Just to get over the fact that God has done this. Won't y'all look at me like that? He said, That's all the strong praise God. Well, I should have said, We loud. What is loud? I don't look forward. So the Bible says that now they hate him because of the outward expression that he now gives. He gives them a coat of many colors. And before you think that this is a very colorful jacket or a very, very colorful uh, now outfit, this is a coat that is made from different type of skins. It is valuable because it is given by his father. The Bible says that now his brothers hate him because of the love 
that his father is now showing him. The Bible says that Joseph goes to sleep one night and begins to dream. When he dreams, the Bible says that he now tries to express what God shows him to his brethren. And the Bible says that they hate him for his dreams and his words. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're hated. Not because, not because of what you have, what you have. but you're hated, you're hated because of what you've seen. I don't know who I'm talking to because God told me to tell at least four people if you can see it, you can have it. Ah! Yeah, yeah. See, see, there, there, there's, there, there's, there, there's a disconnect because. Uh, we have some individuals in here that don't realize that God is now revealing what he's getting ready to do uh, to his children. Understand if God has allowed you to see it, watch this, the only thing that is now hindering you from having it is time and manifestation. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, time and manifestation is getting ready to kiss. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. And my destiny is getting ready to be realized. But in order for this to be realized, we must now address uh, some family issues. Cause, out of it, you can't have money and your family know about it. Let's, let's deal with it. Let's, let's deal with the elephant in the room. Y'all ain't saying that to be here. Because the moment that your family know that you have money, y'all ain't saying that to me. Here come the phone call. You know. Hey, how you doing? You already know how this conversation is going to go. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hey, how you doing? You ain't called me. You don't even talk to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. But now, you mysteriously get my number. And call me. Y'all ain't saying that. And spark up conversation. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How you doing? I'm doing all right, but you know what? They done messed up my check. Uh, you know. I, I ain't doing too well. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. I, w I was just wondering, I was just wondering uh, if I could get a loan. Start talking with a loan. You know they ain't going to pay you. You already know that they ain't going to pay you. Back. And watch this. The, the, the problem is, is not the fact that you... Uh, you know that they ain't gonna pay you your money back, but the fact of the matter is, is that it'd be the people that you know that don't care for you the most. <laughs> that ask you. You wanna say, what happened to that same energy that right. you had? Right. That's it. Y'all ain't saying that. Right. The Bible says that they hated him for his dreams. The Bible says they hated him so much, they built up so much dislike towards him, so much disdain, that they even plot to kill him. Jesus. Can I tell you, my sisters and brothers, there's some people uh, <coughs> that wish, watch this, that you would disappear. Oh, yeah. They wish that you would just watch this, just go away and never come back because their very pre your very presence intimidates them. Oh, God. And you're trying to figure out what in the world? Why do I intimidate you so much? Why does my little intimidate you so much? Why is it that uh, you're trying to figure out? I don't have everything that I want. People say, well, you think you all that. You, you want to say, what? All that? But how? How do you think that I'm all that? You say, listen, you come in here and you, you act like, you know, uh, you got it going on. Are you trying to say to yourself, this is old stuff. 
I just know how to put it together. Yeah, right. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to learn how to put it together. Yeah. And just because you shop at Ross doesn't mean you got to learn how to put it together. Y'all ain't saying that. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Put your clothes together, right? Iron your clothes. Don't come in here, right? I ain't saying nothing to me. Wrinkle from the top of the... Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Just missed the whole iron this morning. You want to say... There's a problem. Watch this. That family can be dysfunctional. Family, watch this, can plot against you. Family will hurt you the most. And watch it sweep it under the rug and expect you to never talk about it. Never talk about what was done. We see the we see the big pile of mess under the rug, but we walk around it like it doesn't exist. Talk sir. We never address it. We look at it. And we go about our daily life. But they plot to kill Joseph. They said it. They, they planned it. They, they said, listen, we're going to throw him in this pit. We're going to kill him. Hallelujah. We're going to kill him because... Hallelujah. We can't stand not only the dreams that he's having, but we can't stand the love that the Father is showing towards him. Oh, wow. Watch this. Some people are upset because of not what you have, but the favor that you have. <laughs> because sometimes favor is greater than money. Yeah. Favor, we get you access. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. To things and to people. They're trying to figure out how in the world do you have this? And I don't have it. And I've been to school. I done, I done paid them student loans and I can't even get that. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Don't understand because the favor of God rests on your life. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the favor of God rests on your life. The, God rests on your life. the Bible says that now they conspire against him. Joseph now goes looking for his brothers. And when he goes looking for his brothers, the Bible says that they say to one another, here comes this dreamer. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, dreamers are coming. You got to make a decision that I'm going to dream past my reality right now. Because when you learn how to dream, y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. You go beyond your comprehension. You go behind, beyond uh, what you think you can have. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the sky is not the limits. I can have more than that. Uh, if I can ever dream it, I can have it. So the Bible says that now uh, they plot against Joseph and that now they now cast him into a pit. Understand uh, that there are certain things that, hallelujah, you give yourself over to do because you're so trusting. Hallelujah. Some of us really do trust family. Uh, sometimes our trust for family gets us in trouble. Uh, no doubt that they, these brothers played games before. I don't know if you've ever played games with your siblings, but I have. This one particular game, Brian, I, my sister tells me, she says, listen, I want you to get in the suitcase. <laughs> get in the suitcase, and I'm going to zip you up. I said, okay, are you going to let me out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you out. Me, gullible, get in the suitcase. She zipped me up. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. I'm struggling to get out. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. All because my sister said, get in there. I got in there. I was trying to really visualize how in the world did they get this young man into a pit 
sometimes we get ourselves in things voluntarily. Okay, y'all won't look at me like that. Uh, some relationships we know are bad when we go in them. Okay, y'all don't want to talk to me. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. You knew he was a liar in the beginning. <laughs> You knew he was lying. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. You knew when he said, oh, this is my car. <laughs> it's your car? You sure? Oh, okay. Praise God. You get in the car. And you sure this is your car? Yes, this is my car. I told you. <laughs> this is my car. Praise <laughs> God. This looks like a lady's car. I don't understand. Praise God. Praise God. And it didn't come out till later. Hallelujah. All right. Let me all right. Let me shut up. Let me let me shut up. Let me shut up. I'm telling on some people. <laughs> you knew that. Uh, she had a problem. You know she wasn't wrapped too tight. <laughs> you knew she was crazy. I ain't saying nothing to me. But you like big butts and smiles. <laughs> oh, I'm that type of preacher. Y'all ain't saying that. If you ain't never heard about me, y'all ain't saying Google me, please. <laughs> trying to figure out. You knew it. But you did it anyway because you were so trusted. Oh, you did it to them. But sure, you won't do it to me. I understand that there's some things, watch this, don't ever think that you're above being used. Oh, that I'm so good that they'll never do it. To me, they'll never <laughs> crazy. They'll never step out on me because I know how to treat a man. All right, all right. Let me get out of that because y'all are looking at me funny. Praise God. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to go down that road. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, I know how to treat a man. Well, surely he would never do that to me. Can I tell you this? Sometimes, hallelujah, people will make a lie out of you. Yeah. And show you. The Bible says that not only do they throw him in the pit but they strip him of his coat the bible says that not only do they strip him of his coat but they now plot to kill him in the pit can I tell you something that sometimes your family will plot against you to now gain some type of advantage Tell your brothers and sisters, say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. What, does it you? what does it profit you to kill me? To kill me. Mm. The Bible says that Reuben says, let's not shed his blood, but let's cast him in the pit. Let's put him in the wilderness, but let's not lay any hands on him. The Bible says that Judah spoke up. <coughs> Judah spoke up. The Bible says that they listen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, sometimes, sometimes. Praise, praise will save your life. Save your life. Amen. Sometimes <laughs> a good praise will save your life because let me tell you something. Praise has a way of causing you uh, taking you to another place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes praise will help you because praise stopped you 
I'm cussing some folk out. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me yes. here. Sometimes your relationship with God is tested. Yes. Yes. People will test you. Yes, they will. Family will test you. They will tell you, why are you going down to that church giving your money to that preacher? Oh, that's what they say. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Man. I know what they say. Give me all your money to the preacher and you ain't got nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Uh-huh. You can't even give me $20 to Friday. I told you I'm going to give you your money back when I get my check. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But there's a problem in our families because our families don't know how to stick together. They used to tell us that blood is thicker than water. But sometimes I just prefer water. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Because watch this. Sometimes people will show you that sometimes people on the outside are more loyal than our own family. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking right. That's good groceries. Y'all ain't saying that. Because sometimes people on the outside see your value more than the people that are close to you. Yeah. You say to yourself, how in the world? You don't how? even How in the world? How? This person don't even know me like that. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's real. But they have more loyalty to me. Yeah. Watch this. I'm gonna say this and see how many people will get with me. Can't nobody talk 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 about you like a junkyard dog, like family. And then when you walk in the room, they act like they ain't even talking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, how you doing? Hey, 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 how you doing? You good? You all right? Yeah, we were just talking about you. Uh, I bet you were. Please God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that now Joseph has to deal with this. And he is sold out by his brother. Can I tell you something? Sometimes God will now use your family, watch this, to further your destiny. Yeah. See, there's something that occur in family that you're unaware of, and you think it's for your own detriment or to your demise, but God has a funny way of now getting into family and now working out how what we thought was for our bad, and he knows how to work it for our good. Because understand this, everything that happens to you, happens to you for a reason. And you're trying to figure out what God, what is the reason why I was the black sheep of my family? Because God wanted to show you, though you might be the black sheep of your family, but uh, you're the one that I called out to, to save your whole entire family. Is there anybody in here that recognizes that God will now use what you think is working against you and work for you? Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it'll work for you in the end. Oh, but you have to now uh, understand the process that God's process is not our process. God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. So the Bible says that now Joseph is now sold uh, for 20 pieces of silver. And now he now you understand the story. He now goes to Egypt, uh, to Egypt and now he is now at Potiphar's house. Now he is now working for Potiphar and the Bible says that he now encounters a woman who now tells him listen if you don't sleep with me then this is what's going to happen. Yeah I'm going to tell everybody that you touch me inappropriately. Y'all ain't here. This is the first recorded sexual harassment case in the Bible. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. So now Joseph has a decision because he is more loyal. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Uh -huh, to Potiphar that he does not even touch his wife. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. So the Bible says that now his wife gets angry with Joseph because Joseph will not put out. And so the Bible says that now Potiphar has no choice but to put Joseph in jail. So the Bible says that now Joseph is in jail because of number one his brother sold him out and now he has somebody that lies on him y'all ain't saying nothing to me here sometimes uh, it takes people selling you out it takes people 
people lying on you uh, uh, for your destiny uh, to be realized. He's in prison. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. And when he's in prison, the Bible says uh, that he's not in uh, uh, the uh, regular population. Y'all listen to but he is now in the jail uh, uh, that uh, are now uh, uh, now uh, now separated from general population. I don't know if you've ever been. Some of us have been to the county. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Man. Some of us have been to the county, and we understand that there's general pop. Come on, right? You. God. Yeah, we know, we know, we know, we know, praise God. So, you know, sometimes we, we do overnight things. Praise, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They overnight and praise God until you get yourself together. After you get yourself together, you go home the next day. Praise God until you get the phone call and say, No, you got to stay the whole weekend. But y'all look at me like that. Praise God. Oh, Bishop. So you got to understand uh, that he is now separated from general population. He is now in the quarters where the king's prisoners are. The Bible says that he is now in prison with a baker and a butler who has now uh, transgressed against the king. The Bible says that they begin to have dreams. And the Bible says that now Joseph, they are telling their dreams out loud. And now Joseph uh, overhears their conversation and now begins to interpret their dreams. Uh, my sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, understand that God has you right where you are for a reason. You think that you're in jail or you're in the uh, prison uh, at your job and God wants you to now interpret uh, what's getting ready to occur at your job. You're trying to figure out uh, God, why do you have me here? And God is trying to show you that I have you here for a reason. God, I want to try change my atmosphere. I want to be around people that are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And God is saying, what is the challenge there? I now put you in the midst of chaos uh -huh, so you can be the light in the midst of darkness. Don't you understand that God will place you in situations so he can get the best you out of you? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. So God will now put you in a cubicle with somebody that gets on your nerve. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. And he will not remove them because watch this. Them being there is making you who you are. And you're trying to figure out, God, what are you doing? You're testing me because this person got one more time and I'm going to open up this can. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. And God will leave you right there and to show you that you got more Holy Ghost in you than you think you do. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. God is wants to show you how much you have in you. you know, Joseph has to stay in jail. He has a, a, a stone for a pillow. He's uncomfortable. And sometimes God will make you uncomfortable. Uh, just to now speak to you. The Bible says that he now interprets the dream of the butler he interprets the dream of the baker. He tells the baker, listen, hallelujah, you're going to die. He tells the butler, you're going to live. You're going to get your position restored. This is what he tells the butler. Watch this. He says, don't forget about me. Hallelujah. When you get your position back. Understand that certain people will forget about you when they come up. Oh, See, you gotta be, you gotta be very, very, uh, you gotta be very analytical in these days. Because let me, let me help you. Because there's some people, watch this, they don't know how to act when they get their income tax. Talk about it. Let's talk about it. Watch this. They ain't get, they ain't, watch this. God, God knows that he can't trust them with millions. So watch this. This is what he do. He bless them with their income tax. And he'll show you. People, y'all ain't saying they can't even handle it. Hallelujah. I come.
come against. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I'm about to mess up. I come against the spirit of lace fronts this year. Let's talk about it. I come against. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Get cars that you're going to only have half for about two months. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me and it's going to be repossessed. I come against the spirit. When the pastor asks for $100, you get an attitude. Right, let's deal with it. So, so the Bible says that now he says, don't forget about me while I'm here. I'm paraphrasing now. The Bible says that he is restored. He was restored to the point. Watch this. He is second in command in Egypt. He is now number two. He is the number two man. Watch this. And when it comes, watch this. This is why you have to be careful how you treat family. Because you never know. Hallelujah. When you're going to need him again. Watch this. So he's number two in all of Egypt. Hallelujah. Pharaoh is the only one that is above him. The Bible says that it comes on a day where famine hits the land. And everybody has to go to Egypt to watch this to get provision. Can I submit this to you, my brothers and sisters? Uh, my grandmother used to say it like this. You better mind the bridge that you go across. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Because the way that you come across it, you're going to have to come back. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you better be careful how you treat me now. Hallelujah. Because God is getting ready to do something. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. I know some of y'all praying, Lord Jesus, just let my number come out. I promise if my number come out, praise God. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. But there's some individuals in here that has to understand that God is getting ready to do something. He's getting ready to blow your mind. The Bible says that now uh, they have to now come to where he is. Famine has struck the land and his brothers have to now come again. And when they come to him again, watch this, they don't even recognize recognize who he is. Can I tell you, my sisters and brothers, that God is getting ready to bless you so much that your enemies won't even recognize what you even look like. Y'all ain't saying that to me here. Uh -huh. I come against that spirit that says, listen, I ain't gonna let money change me when I get money. I sure am. I'm gonna change the way I live. I'm gonna change what I drive. I'm gonna change Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Because when God does it, Gonna be able to recognize how you look. The Bible says that I, I gotta I gotta rush you to Brian. The Bible says that they now come together when they see their brother, they don't recognize him. The Bible says that Joseph plays a trick on him. Plays a trick on him so much that now they wind up telling him, Hallelujah. <laughs> that our father was so hurt. Our father was so <laughs> heartbroken. Watch this. That he had another son. Good God of mine. Had another son. Watch this. To replace you. I told you Judy never came downstairs. They just replaced him, her, with Richie. Y'all don't remember that? Oh, Little Richie. Uh -huh. Little Richie had the curly hair. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Uh, Little light skinned boy. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Hallelujah. How didn't you have money for Judy, but you got money for Richie? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. They replaced him. They replaced him. Watch this. Joseph feels replaced. So he says, listen, I won't give you what you need. Until you bring me this son. Watch this. Hallelujah. And the son's name is now introducing you to your next season. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. The young man's name is getting ready to introduce me. To my next season. You know what his name was, Brian? His name was Benjamin. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. So tell your neighbor, say neighbor, this year, this season, it's all about the Benjamin. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's all about the Benjamin. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know how you feel about it, but Benjamin is in my future. So let me hasten here. The Bible. 
Bible says that now, after Benjamin is now presented, the Bible says that he now reveals to his brother who he is. And when he reveals to his brother and who he is, the Bible says that, watch this, he makes a statement that we now uh, use out of context. He says, you meant it for my evil, but God meant it for my good. And many of us, uh, I say this, y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. We use, the, we use that term when people are uh, now uh, getting on our nerves or are treating us unfairly. You say, uh, you meant it for my evil, but God meant it for my good. That is not the way that Joseph now says it. He says, you meant it for my evil, but look what God has done for all of us. God put me in this position not for me, but he put me in this position for all of us. Give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, I don't know how you feel about it, but God is blessing me not for me, but he's blessing me for my whole entire family. Is there anybody in this room? I gotta get ready to get out of here. But tell your neighbor, say neighbor, at the end of the day, we all family. Y'all ain't here. Give somebody a high five and say neighbor. We are all family. We in this together. Y'all ain't here. If you rock with me in this season, I promise you, anything that you want, I'll make sure that you have it. If you rock with me in this season, I promise you that God, when God blesses me, I'm going to bless you. Shake your neighbor like you get ready to wake him up and say, hey there, neighbor, you're shaking the hand of a long time millionaire in the they can shake your hand, find somebody else, and say, neighbor, you're shaking the hand of somebody that believes God. That's right. Is there anybody in this room that understands that family does matter? Because my family is connected to my wealth. My family is connected to my and when I go up, my family is going up. When I go up, you're going up with me. I tell you, get somebody by the hand. Say, neighbor, when I come up, you're coming up with me. When I come up, you're coming up with me. When I go to the dealership, you're coming with me. When I get a house up, that God will bless me exceedingly, abundantly, above. I tell you, get out your seat, for three people, and say, family does matter. Family does matter. A family that prays together will stay together. Watch this. He would do whatever it took to get low. <laughs> he would change. He ch even changed from Steve to Stephon. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Only to watch this. Hallelujah. 
for her to, watch this, lose interest in Stefan right. and want to see that. Right. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. So this is for about four people. Never change who you are to appease people. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Because at the end of the day, they gonna want the real you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. If you don't want me for who I am, then listen here. You can hit the road. Be nice. 
I said, yeah, it must be. <laughs> Praise God. I think it was your husband that said that. Praise God. But I said, watch this. God wants to bless you. How many know God will bless you? God is going to use family yes, yes. to bless you. Yes, yes. I said, you ain't raising these young men. You ain't raising these boys. Amen. Praise God for them not come back and bless you. Mm -hmm. Bless your mama now. Right. Send us some money. That's Just send right. us some money. That's right. Praise God. Right. Don't, don't, you know, don't, get, right. don't get stupid out there. <laughs> Tell them again, don't get stupid out there. Don't do it. Because you can't, you can't, you can't. Praise God. We you send your mama somebody. So I got to make sure now, Mother King, that when I get myself some shoes, I get my mama some shoes. If I don't, she's going to talk about me. Tell me, oh, it must, must be nice. I like singers too. Say stuff like that. You gotta deal with that. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God is doing something. He's doing something right now. He's doing something in your family. He's dealing with unresolved issues. Watch this. There's some things that we don't address. We let people die out and never talk about it. Hallelujah. But there's some, there's some discussions that need to be had. Hallelujah. There's some things that you need to say to people why they're still here. Right. Y'all ain't saying nothing That's to me. Right. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free because I, I got to talk to my dad before he died mm -hmm. and tell him, listen, listen, it was okay that you weren't there in my life. Because if you were there in my life, I probably wouldn't have been a preacher. I would have probably been like you. And sometimes God does things and we don't understand it. Why he does the things that he does. But he does it for a reason. You, you're trying to figure out, why did I have my dad in my life? I needed my dad. I needed, I needed that. And God showed me, no, what you needed, you needed me. And so when my dad saw me, last time I saw my dad, when I became a bishop, he said to me, he said, man, I'm proud of you because I know I didn't do this. This was all God. Some things God wants to do on his own. And you got to let him do it. Doesn't make sense to you. 